Все. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Позвольте представиться. Меня зовут Арег Великодамян. Я являюсь руководителем группы разработки серверных языков в Интеле, подразделение здесь в Москве. И сегодня я вам расскажу про стратегию Intel в области облачных технологий, ультрамасштабируемого. And uh, so then the data uh, uh, processing. Uh, uh, so there's a legal disclaimer. I don't want to talk about that. And so I have uh, and this structure of my presentation to parts. And first part is uh, we'll talk about the strategy, uh, some uh, big business tasks uh, that we were facing and uh, how uh, we uh, uh, respond. And then the technical tasks on hand that we need to address uh, so to make sure that the future comes tomorrow. Um, then, so then the cloud infrastructure, uh, so uh, as, as, as you know, what is cloud infrastructure? Do you happen to know what cloud infrastructure is? Mm, yeah, okay, then it's a digital services economy, it works already, it's an operation and uh, at the same time, we, we see that not only uh, uh, our analytical data by 2020, uh, uh, but 85% uh, of all applications uh, will be delivered via cloud infrastructure. And the driver uh, is, uh, is who, which is the driver? The first, the first two com company uh, is the corporate sector, and uh, and uh, that was the first driver. And the second is the Internet of Things. That's uh, another big driver um, that, that will bring the future uh, uh, to us. Uh, and uh, big data is another big data is, is, is another driver mm, that will bring future closer. Uh, currently. Uh, so all of us know that uh, this is all developing very rapidly, but uh, but cloud technology, uh, cloud deployment is still too complex, and uh, we and we need to uh, so we can see that it's a, a, a program a program uh, configured uh, infrastructure. This is the whole stack uh, is developing very rapidly. So that con is configured uh, by 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 software and uh, deployed in in cloud mm. uh, uh, so hyper uh, uh, so then ultra scaled uh, uh, providers like uh, scale, uh, so they they enhance uh, uh, so the space of traditional uh, applications and uh, so more and more sophisticated uh, applications are are can be uploaded into cloud and this certainly requires uh, more and more uh, efficiency and performance uh, in spite of the growing uh, ecosystem of the cloud uh, technology and uh, so all the mm, uh, so it's, uh, still all these things are fragmented anyway uh, and uh, so there are very few uh, 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 of uh, 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 off-the-shelf solutions that can be deployed and uh, taken uh, out of the box and uh, and make them work uh, right away uh, the very few of those and uh, so we can see that these three factors, uh, three segments uh, that will drive growth of cloud technology is uh, so hyperscale applications. And, uh, and uh, so the main, uh, so the goal is quite easy. So because to increase uh, the uh, return on investment, um, and uh, so they will be operating in the as optimization of applications, they will be con concentrating on that issue. Uh, to deliver the best performance than then fast followers uh, or pursuers. Uh, so these are the providers of the second plane. Uh, so their uh, their goal is how to compete uh, Amazon uh, with Amazon. And uh, if you can take uh, an application and deploy it, and uh, so to adjust infrastructure to compete with Amazon without uh, having all these uh, uh, this huge economy of scale and, uh, and hyperscale ability that, that Amazon has and, and they don't. And uh, uh, and then uh, so then uh, corporate uh, uh, requirements as well, uh, broad enterprise. So these are the, uh, the, the these three hyperscale fast followers, broad enterprise. And so to optimize new tasks uh, to the current or future infrastructure. And uh, what what we need? Uh, so we need just to uh, to achieve the higher efficiency, so large scale efficiency, economy of scale and how to uh, combat uh, the fragmented uh, stack uh, that the cloud infrastructure offers. Mm. 
uh, and uh, in the corporate segment, uh, we know that there are uh, uh, closed uh, solutions uh, uh, that may be very complex, uh, very expensive, proprietary solutions, very, and uh, and the open source stacks are are uh, are not yet ready uh, to operate in the corporate sector, in the enterprise sector. So then, the Intel strategy has three steps. Um, uh, so first step is, uh, is optimizing a cloud infrastructure across a, an entire range of workloads, uh, different tasks. Then to improve uh, a software-defined infrastructure efficiency and easy deployment. To simplify its deployment uh, for all those who want to participate. And then uh, collaborate with industry leaders in the area of standards and standardization. Uh, let's look at uh, this chart, uh, chart of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of d demand for the most recent uh, Intel processors. 80% uh, of, uh, of the main uh, 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 so, uh, super scalable uh, uh, cloud providers, uh, so they want more and more efficiency, uh, performance, more and more performance. So they buy the most uh, state-of-the-art, the most recent uh, high-speed processors. And that they want more uh, uh, performance, uh, so that they optimize uh, their uh, so hyperscalability, and uh, so then they, they use other uh, accelerators, uh, APJ uh, for, uh, and as other this UAPJ for uh, for search. Uh, 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 so then Intel, uh, as as a response to that, uh, they jointly so the Altera company that uh, they set up this company, and they and they they give an opportunity to have. Uh, uh, please who got uh, in, 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 in built in the processor and uh, uh, and offload uh, so to up, uh, to do upload to some of the tasks uh, to specialized servers for their quick implementation then uh, so there is some middleware as well uh, for more efficient operation of uh, of uh, uh, cloud infrastructure SSD uh, uh, megabyte internet etc switches And uh, the more, the more performance, uh, we don't need such performance. Uh, so, but it's the other way around. The, uh, the bigger, uh, the, the uh, so then the more performance we have, so the more money they make, and they save on infrastructure. So we see that. Uh, uh, then it's like if you go back to uh, uh, the year of 2000 and the prices of that time. Uh, so then, uh, so the cost of service delivery went up, uh, went down. That allows to uh, deploy new applications. So, uh, so that went down twice. Then there's a programmable infrastructure, uh, uh, so which determines the entire stack from uh, computing a part, computing part, then uh, storage, uh, network optimization of uh, and selection of the uh, OC. Mm which on top of it, virtualization on top, orchestration, and the uh, developer environment, that's it. And so virtualization, orchestration, developer. So this is all designed by, by software. <coughs> that it increases the, increase the value of the cloud infrastructure and reduces price. The goal of the strategy of Intel, its main goal is to uh, ensure that for a specific application, now we spend months to deploy highly scalable infrastructure just wide and deep now it just is to make sure that such infrastructure can be in a few hours uh, and automated to the maximum possible extent point three is alignment with industry and industry leaders standardization recently we have launched the open container standard based on docker uh, intel is actively involved and there is a product called clear linux it's a reference design uh, reference linux for data centers offered by linux it has a reference container inside you can find it um, quite openly it's available and uh, then uh, operations with Red Apt, Tectonic and others help us to develop reference architectures. 
As a result, we reduce the time to market. Well, here uh, we can summarize. We have Intel strategy consisting of three steps and going uh, further on to the technical part I'd like to remind you of the fact that traditional ultra scalable computing or supercomputing can be divided into two parts. Part one is a modern supercomputer with tens of thousands of nodes, hundreds of thousands of processors its purpose is to uh, run one task, complete one task as soon as possible. We download the data. It works for hours, sometimes days. The task is uh, numerically intensive. And uh, the usual cluster uh, and PCs uh, would um, process the task for uh, years. Here it, we can solve uh, that problem in hours, in a matter of hours. Then Internet data centers work with clouds. Uh, millions and hundreds of millions of customers uh, with billions of applications and we have hundreds of millions of uh, small transactions within those applications and they are designed to collect, store and analyze data. If we put it uh, here in these two dimensions, so computational intensity and data intensity, uh, traditional supercomputers are on your right uh, angle. In, below modeling and simulation driven science and engineering that's the task of traditional supercomputers while uh, modern clouds uh, occupy the top left angle uh, they solve data intensive uh, searches automatic translation video streaming and so on traditional personal computers are in the left on the angle below, left low angle. 85% of personal computing uh, tasks will go to the cloud. As you can see, uh, there is nothing in the top right angle. Here we have a great desire for convergence, for the implementation of our strategy that would be very useful and interesting to converge in that angle. These are the tasks which are, on the one hand, uh, computing intensive. On the other hand, they are related to large data volumes and everything should be done in near real time. Uh, complex analytical tasks related to learning, deep learning, uh, forecasts, forecasting models, and so on. So this is the picture. And then uh, the broken line shows us the current state of the art. It's a front end of research. You know, we know high performance computing and simulation. We know big data analytics, big data analytics. But the area of interest is related to large-scale data-driven modeling. This is something which needs research. And in that area, that area is the most interesting for researchers. Looking at current supercomputers, we would see that the main benchmark is performance in so-called flops and to get into top 100 top 500 uh, we have to solve the standard task uh, perform gaussian elimination of dense matrix and we know that it's not very representative of uh, real 
world applications we can demonstrate one figure hundreds of teraflops uh, but in reality um, it will the machine will hardly use 50 percent of its capacity we cannot measure real time uh, real life applications by only one benchmark we need diverse measuring capabilities we cannot measure hpc cap capabilities by its biggest machine we need diversity of size design and application it's very important to develop uh, software infrastructure that could use such uh, machines efficiently it's important also to have machines run more and more complex uh, applications to solve complex problems then modern supercomputer programming includes at the system level uh, MPI which helps us synchronize nodes which help us synchronize and communicate usually it's open MP which supports parallelism of flows or threads and which helps us use vector programming ZM5 silicon extraction multiple data NVIDIA CUDA is uh, something else We also know that performance degrades quite quickly or varies quite quickly if we don't ha uh, find a perfect balance between memory and processes. As a result, we get a program which works on a supercomputer and which is actually a combination of different paradigms of programming the task is to optimize for a specific hardware configuration then read a well-known researcher of hpc high performance computing mentioned once that as the performance of hpc's approaches infinity the Moore's law is still working. The number of people uh, who can use efficiently those machines is approaching zero. We have ninja programmers of that kind. We have very few of them. It's very difficult to train them. It takes a lot of time. My colleague told you how to vectorize uh, all that without proper knowledge of all the structures and the architecture of Intel processor using OpenMP or compiler. That's what I told you. The main task is to optimize an application for a specific uh, configuration or hardware architecture. And this, naturally, uh, complicates uh, mm, compatibility and mig migration and well requires a lot of skills from the developer as far well in the cluster programming we see Hadoop or Spark systems with a lot of parallel programming parallel file systems MapReduce programming mo model. We can do it in memory with different libraries as the Spark does. One more example is GraphLab machine learning system. And the main peculiarity is that you program at a more abstract level on top and you don't go down. You allow runtime system to balance workload to support reliability, resilience, to uh, control scheduling. But this centralized scheduler is becoming your bottleneck because you have intensive tasks and it's difficult for uh, the scheduler 
to control everything. Copying to and from disk becomes very costly because diversity is huge and in one node you will need data stored somewhere else far away and it limits uh, data migration or data movement what does a developer want his dream is to program on a well on well developed well defined abstractions that would reflect in the cloud the computation the data organization resource allocation and resilience and all that uh, should be done with specialized libraries and compilers that would offer performance comparable to uh, manual one and all that uh, should support a combination of uh, domain independent and domain specific libraries and software modules partly the answer to this question can be provided by the so-called PaaS platform as a service. We told you uh, before about uh, software-defined architectures, and this is the way cloud technologies have been developing. In traditional IT, software as a service, when the entire stack, stack is under control from computing from networking to application. Then infrastructure as a service is a second step. Those systems take only part of the problem. Everything related to the operating system, storage, uh, middleware and applications. And platform as a service when you configure all the lower layers and the programmer deals with applications and data only. Well, why pass? It's clear why. Because it solves the problem defined before. Developers m make it possible to scale if I look at Google, which looked at Gmail, when you open Gmail somewhere on a certain platform far away, a container like Docker is built, a Gmail application is loaded, and it's, it runs for you personally. It does a lot of things in parallel, but platform as a service uh, supports scalability super scalability it can run applications at uh, optimal machines it reduces risks quite significantly uh, time to market risks uh, fault tolerance risks and uh, helps you to raise over subscription well, this is platform as a service operating as a program operating infrastructure you can see a lot of uh, differences between traditional virtualized cloud and hyperscale cloud we can see uh, the utilization of systems uh, utilization grows more and more we use elastic things resource pooling containering it raises utilization on average it adds another layer on top to manage virtualized resources to orchestrate them and on top of orchestrator of the orchestrator we have a lot of applications and the next step is hyperscale cloud when the orchestrator is at the very top when it orchestrates not only servers but clouds A few words about the Go platform. 
for program configured infrastructures we use go language it's a new language developed by google robin Parkin and uh, some other people in 2009 formally published it it was uh, first version was published in 2009 it's static compilable with uh, garbage collection with parallelism at the language level formally it supports uh, parallel processing it can be compiled very fast its performance is really great it's used mainly in program configured systems it uses programmers that we work with Python and Ruby and C programmers that want simplicity and productivity in the cloud Docker Kubernetes core OS SoundCloud Cloud Foundry uh, are the products uh, based on go go is developing very fast and this is the trading of two in 2015 it's number 11 by popularity and uh, robert the creator of uh, go be uh, well believes this is the only threat to python well to conclude uh, open source strategy is still important for intel uh, that is why the tasks i demonstrated are yet to be solved so i call to action please take part in open source projects use go and solve the problems they are interesting and can be very profitable for you personally so i am within time thank you any other any questions if you have no questions then that would be all a uh, question can you evaluate the level of standardization in software defined environments uh, what you we have and what is the current status at the very beginning of the way open containers uh, well the first step to standards has been made standards of container infrastructure it's a de facto standard cloud foundry it's not a de jure standard it's de facto standard it works on top of cloud foundry we have a lot of commercial applications based on cloud so cloud foundry is sort of uh, a standard it, but uh, we are at the very beginning of the way the structure includes uh, something else like well program configure conf progr software defined infrastructure well intel can help you with uh, our counseling uh, with our advice but we do not produce the cooling systems uh, that you mentioned but the cooling systems uh, should be present in the clusters yes this is the next step then you can also include power generation in the data center why not it's far away from what we do if that is all thank you